Hi everyone! In this video, we will delve a little deeper into the profitability aspect of a company. How would we do that? By calculating and interpreting some profitability ratios, of course. They provide information on the ability of a firm to generate profits and meet its stakeholders' interests. In simple terms, a company is profitable if total revenue exceeds total expenses, right? Before we continue, though, make sure you are familiar with the basic structure of an income statement. Profitability can be calculated on several different levels. Let's briefly recap. First, we have revenue. Then, the cost of production is recorded in the cost of goods sold line. Revenue minus COGS equals gross profit. In turn, Gross profit minus operating expenses gives us the operating profit, also widely known as earnings before interest and tax, or EBIT. Moving down the line, EBIT minus interest expense results in earnings before tax. And EBT minus tax equals net income or net profit of a company. Voila! Once you learned this structure, the rest of the lesson would be a piece of cake. Keep in mind that we will be using the terms profit, earnings and income interchangeably. All of them measure the very same thing, that is, profitability. Okay, as a matter of fact, you can illustrate any of these subtotals as a percentage of revenue. This is how we calculate the so-called margin ratios. For example, the gross profit margin, or return on sales, is calculated as gross profit, totaling revenue minus costs of goods sold, divided by revenue. Similarly, the net profit margin equals net income divided by revenue. In this instance, it is not unusual for financial analysts to estimate an operating profit margin or even a pre-tax profit margin as well. All you need to calculate them is the income statement of a company. Even better, you have all these ratios readily available in any common size income statement, which presents each line item as a percentage of total revenue. All right. Let's now calculate and interpret some profitability ratios for Sales Smart Co. Here are all the formulas we've just discussed. Starting with the currently reported year, we take gross profit and revenue amounts from the P&L sheet. We do the same for operating profit, earnings before tax, and net income. As you can see, all of these ratios have a revenue of $198,845 in the denominator. Any profit figure divided by revenue gives us a margin indicator. Okay. Can we already draw any conclusions at this stage? At first glance, it seems that SaleSmart does generate sufficient profits to maintain the business. However, we need to evaluate the trend. If the firm's profits are declining over time, this would be a warning sign of potential issues. So, we need to calculate the four multiples based on the previous year's income statement. We divide the profit lines by the total revenue to get SalesSmart's indicators for last year. Amazing. It's pretty easy to perform ratio analysis in Excel, isn't it? The results are obvious. SalesSmart's profitability is improving on all four levels. Gross profit margin increases from 23.05% to 24.42%. And the net profit margin goes up from 7.75% to 8.90%. By all means, this is thanks to the fact that SalesSmart increased its revenue significantly over the two consecutive years. Good for it. In our daily life, we come across firms reaching sales milestones and those falling to the ground. Striving for success, what path is a company ultimately supposed to follow to improve its profit margins? Well, if we discern the formula, we see that it should opt for either increasing revenue by raising selling prices and sales volume or decreasing expenses. Either one would do. Okay, broadly speaking, high margins are a sign of success. Nevertheless, this doesn't automatically mean that low margins, in turn, reflect poor performance. They may just be caused by significant one-off events, such as expansion or restructuring costs, which will reduce profits in the current period. From an investment perspective, though, these expenses will pay off in the future. Thus, to avoid misinterpretation, such relationships should never be analyzed in isolation. Terrific job. 
Apart from margin ratios, there are some return ratios that also fall into the profitability group. We shall check out four of those measures. As a rule, we compute them by dividing a given profit metric by the amount of invested funds, most commonly the total assets of a company. In like manner, we calculate return on assets and operating return on assets. In doing so, finance professionals can easily gauge the ability of a firm to make profits out of the assets it manages. Besides, you might as well need the operating income as a percentage of total capital. This is how the return on total capital metric is calculated. Application-wise, it may so happen that a firm is profitable, but at the same time heavily in debt. In times of such synthetic inflation of profitability, an investor would wish to have a more realistic view of a company's gains. That is, how much $1 of capital invested brings to the table. It is often estimated by using the total capital figure at year end. However, Profit is generated all year round, so we'd better use the average of the capital invested during the year. Hence, we take the average of total capital, debt plus equity, at the beginning and end of the year as the base. Alternatively, you may be interested in the profits generated per $1 of equity invested in a company. In this case, you calculate the return on equity indicator as net income divided by the average total equity. Depending on the purpose of your analysis, you have a great variety of tools to use. In a nutshell, all these equations assess a company's ability to generate profits as compared to its size and capital investment. Therefore, the higher the ratios, the better the firm's prospects. Excellent. What about SalesSmart's return ratios? We can easily populate this template. This time, though, we will need the company's balance sheet. From there, we will be able to evaluate the average amount of equity, total assets, or total capital of the company in two consecutive years. Okay. To calculate the return on assets, we take the net income of $17,698 million. In the denominator, we type the formula equals average and select the range of total assets in the current and previous years. We obtained that return on assets is 10.13% in the latest reported period. After we reperform the process for the prior year, we realize that this metric has improved. That's a good start to our analysis. Following the same logic, can you compute the operating return on assets? Of course you can. This time you need to take SalesSmart's operating profit in the respective year. The average total assets remain the same. It seems that the company utilizes its asset base very well, right? Before jumping to conclusions, it's worth checking whether the same trend is valid for the total capital employed. That's why we take earnings before interest and tax in the current and previous years. Then we proceed with calculating the average of total capital. Okay, when we divide one by the other, we see that SalesSmart is doing great in terms of profitability. Finally, we go ahead and estimate the return on equity measure. You already know how to do that, don't you? We have net income. Good. Then we compute average total equity, this year and in the prior year. The result confirms SalesSmart's excellent performance results. Return on equity increased from 13.14% to 14.43% this year. The trend looks promising indeed. However, don't forget that a cross-check against industry averages is always needed. The return on equity is an important assessment tool, frequently used as a starting point in financial analysis. It is indicative of the firm's overall performance. Below average ratios usually mean that the equity capital invested does not generate sufficient profits, or at least not so as compared to other peer companies. That's why equity investors follow this metric closely. To identify potential issues, the return on equity indicator can be further decomposed to individual components using the so-called DuPont formulas. More on that later. Thanks for watching.